back again. <laughs> Alan Wool. And, 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 and uh, you know, it's the second time we haven't done a costume change. Uh, we, need to, we need to hire a costume. No, 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 no. Uh, hang on. It's actually because coffee, we are so busy, we're getting so many test cars. It's crazy. That we've got to do, sometimes we've got to do more than one in a it's session. Crazy. It is crazy. Thank you. Thank you, OEMs. Thank you, manufacturers. Keep Thanks, coming. people. Keep them coming. Keep them flowing. Yeah, we're enjoying it, I must say. Love every minute. And the car we're talking about right now, I particularly enjoyed yeah. it. I found that surprising, which was, of course, the Toyota CHR. CHR Luxury. Luxury. Yeah. The top of the range, 549,000 Rand. Yeah. So There's possibly my only elephant in the, in, in the whole thing. Over the half a bar mark. Well over. But well there, over. But there are a lot coming over, over that mark, as we mentioned. There's the Mocker now. Yeah. Um, There's know, the Mocker, so the uh, Kona. There's going to be a V-dub of some description. Yeah, there is there. somewhere in the mix. We and, know that. And, and, and don't forget the Mazda CX-3. That was probably one of the first ones in this little category. And this, we mustn't forget about Kia. I think Kia's probably got... Uh, uh, Kia actually somewhere, haven't... Somewhere in there. Not quite. Sportage? No, Sportage is much bigger. Mm. Uh, Seltos? No, no. They actually haven't got this. Funnily enough, in the Kia range, not in South Africa anyway. There probably is one overseas. They just haven't brought it here. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what. I we don't need. think it's going to be long before we find one. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Sure, yeah. but so it's a little. It's, it's a coupe crossover. It's it's the as I, as I said mm -hmm. in the video, it's the follow on to the Duke. Nissan Nissan said, yeah, we're going to chuck in the gauntlet here, and and they built the Duke, and you either love or hate the Duke. Yeah, but the, the, the Duke was a frog, uh, and, and I mean a frog as it. I didn't say dog. Listen, I listen, said a frog. Listen, listen, they're brave. I mean, they have made some design decisions. They have. The years they have. Are, but that, hang on. That stand it was with. distinctive. It stood out. But that's my point. And the CHR is exactly well, that. It's but the CHR is even a bigger thing. Because Toyota, the conservative so car exactly. company. It's the one you least expect to see. You go, I mean, and then that thing? <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, exactly. It, it, and then the color of it. I mean, okay, it's yeah. a test car. It's purple. a test car. Yeah, purple metallic brown. purple brown. Uh, I don't know. Uh, when I first saw it, I thought, uh. <laughs> But it kind of grows on you. It's yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a fungus. It grows well, it's distinctive. It's nice. Again, it's, it uh, stands out because the car stands out in the first place. So it, it, it kind of it works multiplies like the effect. That's the sort of car that would be nice in a bright burnt orange. It's really up there and out in your face. It could carry it. Uh, it could probably carry get away with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, look, it's got all the features. Uh, hasn't it? Hasn't it just? I mean, I mean this particular... Now, this is, a, this is a little model upgrade they've just done. That's why they gave it to us again, because I have tested CHR not that long ago, about a year or so back. Oh, I'm a little bit jealous. Uh, really so, let's just talk that quickly now, what they've thrown into it since I last tested. Adaptive cruise control. Adaptive cruise control. Which takes about 45 set steps to set up. But okay, it's there. but it's there. And then that autonomous parallel parking, parking story, yeah. which... Uh, Watch what the video. Is, we actually, story. hopefully, you can see what William was trying to do. Parallel park without yeah. touching the wheel. Okay. It, it did it all. Yeah. So it's items like that that they've thrown in now that up the game. I remember seeing this on the top of the range Lexuses. Well, know, exactly. Sort of Lexi. Lex Lexi I. <laughs> Two million rand plus cars. You know, yeah. Now, well, this and, is the point. Yeah. And now, and now it's available to. At five, at five forty nine, five fifty. Yeah. Look, you've got that. You've got the leather. You've got. Soft touch dashboard for once. <laughs> for nice, once. Nice, nice touch screen. Yeah, sound good system. touch screen, sound system. Very, very. All of those features that you'd expect, as you say, could have been in a Lexus at double the money. Yeah. Quite, quite comfortably. You got performance to match. Well, I mean, let's. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Let's let's just get to that in a minute. Let's talk. Let's just finish features, and then we'll get to that. Okay. You've also got things like seven airbags. Yeah. Which is good on all the models in the range. Yeah. So you've got that safety. And we've mentioned the adaptive cruise control, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you've got the nice safety spec. Auto the pie beams. Yeah, correct. So all of that is there. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the leather. You've got electric adjustment on the driver's yeah, seat, not enough. for the passenger. That's okay. Fair enough. I mean, at least you've got it on the drivers. Could add a memory function. For yeah. Wife and husband could do. Not, uh, I'm going to use my picky really point yet again. Why really do you really not have locking on pull off? Sorry, I just don't get it. It's one little relay that should be added. I can't understand it, it in be, South Africa. It might be available as an option in the menus maybe, to turn on. Maybe, maybe. I, I would like to. menus on that. Yeah, yeah, I would like to know. Yeah. Uh, okay, the other thing, we only found one USB. We only found one USB. Okay, we only found, I don't know, uh, maybe an investigation is still needed. 112 volt in the under the armrest. Yeah. And it's a legacy USB, not a USB-C. Yeah, okay. So, little picky point there. And then, big picky point. 
where do you put your phone when you're driving? <laughs> Once you plugged it into the USB. Once, yeah, even worse when you're on Android. Yeah. And you plugged it uh, uh, or Apple CarPlay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, even worse. Where do you put the cable coming all over? So to be yeah. fair, our phones are quite big. Yeah. You might be able to get a smaller one in. Yeah, but, but our, most of us carry these size phones. These th this is an average. Our phones are average size. They, yeah. they certainly there are some smaller. Yes, yes, but these are definitely in the game of average, yeah. and yet there was nowhere to put them. Yeah. So got to get my picky points in. Sorry, sorry, Yota, but yeah. got to tell you, call it as it is. Now let's talk the engine. I'd let's. Live, you know what? I'd still live with it. I'd yeah. still live with it. I let's, was very happy because that engine mm. at a 1.2 litre turbo doesn't feel like a 1.2 no. litre. Maybe, as I said, because of the turbo, we're not experiencing yeah. mm. the, the, the adjustment. But 85 but kilowatts, 185, 185 newton meters. meters. It felt punchier than that. It, maybe, it, maybe it feels over 100 kilowatts to me. Maybe it's because of that gearbox. And it's a CVT box. Yeah, but it's Toyota CVT. CVT. No, that, I hate CVT boxes, but I'm getting, I'm be, they're becoming better. But hang on. Just they remember that better. that same CVT essentially is used in the whole Toyota range and some of the Lexus models now. Mm. So we're not talking a box that they've just chucked in. Yeah, no, it's not rubbish. Uh, believe me, it has, it's proven yeah. itself and it has to prove itself. Also, the interesting thing, do you, I don't know if you recall, the CHR was actually the first South African model to get that 1.2 turbo. Oh, really? Yeah which they later brought into the Corolla hatch. I speak under correction. I think you can even get Corolla with that engine in some markets. Mm. Not yet. But that's, that was one of the features when they launched CHR, was the radical looks and the radical engine for Toyota. Because remember, their but first little turbo. You only get the 1.2 in the CHR. You, can't, you can't get like a 2. Interestingly, manual, they, they are, they're all... There are also two manual options. Yes. Okay, in the range, two manual, two auto. I have to say, I'd probably stick with the auto. The it's so nice. It's so easy. Why not? Okay, the only other thing to point out is, again, we couldn't find, either of us this time, was the exact readouts on fuel consumption, etc., for the full test period. It's a, it's a little bit confusing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I got, I got, mm. I remember one of my journeys after doing a couple of, couple of, couple of um, freeway trips was I got it down to around about 7.4, which I think is probably about as low as you're going to get. Well, I was going to say now for a car like that, and that's open road, Yeah. it, it appears we averaged about eight for the test. I would say around about that. You now, can probably expect in your day to day. Yeah. Now that's probably about a liter per hundred higher than I would have liked. But then again, you got the performance. I was going to say we both enjoyed the performance. So mm take that out of the equation but i'm just yeah but i would say your average driver if you're going to buy one of these expect eight to eight and a half yeah. as a living figure depending obviously on what your commute's like correct but as an overall average i don't think you're going to get it much lower i enjoyed the car so much i would not begrudge it it's still nah, nah. i would yeah. live with the fuel consumption look it's not stupid it's not 10 or whatever like that but one of those cars yeah. i genuinely enjoyed getting up out of, out of yeah. to go and drive mm. Look, the only other, only other thing, but it's a function of the design, is the boot space is a bit limited. Yeah, and, and, and it's surprisingly high, the boot floor. I, yeah. I can't see, even with the space, I don't know where mm. all the space underneath is gone. Mm. Yeah. It's just yeah. gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe, maybe I, I don't know where it's gone, but it's gone somewhere. Uh, maybe, but look, maybe it's an extra fuel tank in there or something. Those are little compromises Small. that you make. The rear seat space is fairly it's good fairly compared good. to, again, the segment. Yeah. It's no better or worse than any of the others. And in that category, there is the trade-off. Do you want rear seat or do you want boot? Yeah, it's always a, Unfortunately, it's always a catch, yeah. there's, and in that particular niche, it's a bigger trade-off than usual and a decision that had to be made at design time. I can't complain. No, if you really want to carry loads, drop back seats. Exactly. So, or drop one back seat and, and still carry a passenger in the back. Although it's not as deep as anything, mm, yeah. I think that uh, just visualizing our... Mm. And your suitcases that go down to the coast. If you pack them on top of each other, yeah. you would you would actually fit them. Well, look, uh, take take the shelf out first of all. Sure. Okay. Uh, you get a lot more space. You get a lot more space, and then, as I said, even if you drop, I've done this with hatchbacks before. Yeah. Is if you drop the one third, the forty, mm. you've still got room for one, if not two, in the back seat, depending on how big they are. If it's kids, definitely two. Yeah. Uh, two adults would be squeezed, but. You've still got, but that gives you a massive amount of, because then big suitcases, a pretty big suitcase will fit on that 40. Yeah. Yeah. 
So if you are traveling, no, you can't travel four or five adults maybe, but you yeah, certainly, your, whoever does. your two adults, two kids, average yeah. family, you can do it easily. You can get it done. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, so ride quality on the car I found was, was yeah. pretty good. Mm. I loved the steering. It was communicative. It was direct. It was light. The gearbox was wonderful. It was in the right gear at the right time, most of the time. Uh, overtaking wasn't a, wasn't an issue. It was a non-event. It just happened if you wanted to. And you put your foot down and go. Cruising, mm. lovely. Um, as I say, very very few niggles with the car. No, I mean I've, I've mentioned a few silly little points, but they little sticking points. But <laughs> look, if I was putting down five hundred and fifty thousand rand of my money, mm -hmm. I would look at those points. Sure. Quite honestly. Sure. And then compare them with everything compare else. Compare to, to the others we've mentioned yeah, just now, just and see then. What the the mix is and what you can can cannot live with. Then make my decision. Sure. But it certainly is competitive and you can't take away the fact it's got a Toyota badge. You can't take away the fact it's got a Toyota badge. That's what I said to you in the beginning. <laughs> so you actually got something right for a change. <laughs> and, and that Toyota badge does count. Oh come on. It's it's got weight. <laughs> and and with Bellino looks, Starlet, excuse me. And with those looks. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 just yeah. I think it's a yeah, no, look, uh, yeah, it, the, uh, in fact, my biggest surprise is the fact that they don't sell bigger numbers, I, quite honestly. I, I can't be in my mind around it because I think it's brave of Toyota, I think it's ambitious of Toyota, it's got all the hallmarks of, 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 of the Toyota build quality that one has mm. come to expect from the brand, and it should sell like hotcakes. Do you, do you know, I, solid, no, I'll tell solid, you what it is, little car. Uh, opinion Not time, little car, actually. opinion time, yeah. number one, it is a, a real little niche. Whereas Toyota generally are in the mass markets. Well, you and I always like odd cars. Yeah. Maybe that's why we like Correct. It. But do you agree? It is a little niche. I, I think so. Over number one. And number two, how but much marketing have you ever seen Toyota do of the CHR? No. You know what it does? Mm? It's in that segment that's growing at, that sp at, yeah. at the fastest pace. I want to also mm. mention mm. another thing that that mm. car's got, which, uh, which which I noticed at night. It's got mm. this little flashy downlight thing to tell uh, you we've got the Toyota CHR. Uh, the, the, the puddle, puddle lamps, as they call puddle them. Puddle lamps, is yeah. that what they call that's them? That's what they call them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, unfortunately, that's become such a gimmick but, lately, but, but, but yeah. But as you say, that's about the only marketing I've seen for the CHR, actually. <laughs> No, if you point it, point it out of the car itself. Yeah, market it's itself, like, yeah. Hey, buy mm. me, look mm -hmm. at me, buy me, please, someone, because I'm a good little car. And, and, and it is. Yeah. It I, is. I think if, if they had to push it a little bit harder, it would be nice. But, yeah, look, Toyota, I mean, really, it's, it's let's not go there. And yeah. I don't think they need our advice on their marketing. No, no, they certainly don't. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's leave it at that. But, All again, right. this is one of these cars that gets two yeah. thumbs up. No, absolutely. Definitely, even with couple of little picky points ah. but they are the rest of the car is so good i can live with i can live with it correct and that's it that's it Have from Willino, yeah <laughs> see you next time ciao, ciao.